In this video, we're going to discuss a design for loops that are not vulnerable to running forever within Android using Java. And again, we're doing this from a defensive standpoint. So a for loop is used to repeat a section of code a certain number of times. It's very similar to the while loop, but allows more control as to when and what values your loop starts and ends at. So precautions still need to take place to avoid endless loops, and we're going to discuss this uh, during this video. So using a for loop to perform a series of repetitive tasks, keep in mind how this not only saves you from typing out each line of the same code numerous times, it's also going to make sure your code is more readable and maintainable by someone else. And this is especially useful when tracking down bugs at a later time. So for loops usually loop for a known number of times or a predicted number of times. The value may come from a result of a calculation, a value in a database, or a number entered by an end user, for example. Now, a for loop is made up of basically three parts. We have an initializer or an initial value, and this is the starting point of your for loop. So in most cases, it will be an integer, and the value can be something you supply or supplied by the end user. And then there's a termination or when to stop. This is perhaps the most important part of the for loop because it controls when your for loop will exit based on the condition being met. And then finally, the last part, the step statement controls how your actual loop is incremented. Okay. So I have such a for loop right up here and we can see the three components here. So we have int counter equals zero, the initialization or initial value, the termination counter is less than or equal to the loops. And then, of course, how we actually do our step increment, and we're saying counter plus plus in this example. So the number is 0 to 8, basically, in this example here, if I just show it up here. Let's just say somebody puts in a number 8, okay? So it would loop through this time 8 times. So we would capture this from the front end. And so we're going to say this would basically be a value of 8. So our condition is that variable i must be less than eight and we would add one to a variable i each time. Now an important part of any loop is to give yourself an out to avoid a loop that runs forever. You can use a conditional statement along with the keyword break to break out of the loop at any time. And for loops will be one of the most used looping patterns that you'll ever have. So if we have here, if we're going through this, we need to make sure that effectively this actually breaks. So the good news here is counter plus plus will increment one each time. So assuming that someone doesn't put in an astronomical value like, uh, you know, several million, this will exit, you know, correctly. So one of the things from a defensive standpoint you could do is put some parameters around what this value could be. So maybe something cap it at a thousand and you could use some, some different type of logic like that. Effectively, the main component here is that you're understanding when your for loop will actually terminate and put some parameters and conditions around to make sure that happens. So this has been a discussion around the design around for loops that are not vulnerable to running forever for Android using Java.